Howdy gang and welcome to your ninth REST API tutorial and in this video we are finally going to connect to MongoDB and start saving some data to it. Okay then, so now we have set up our schema, we have set up our model and we can readily accept post requests. We created this handler a few tutorials back. I think it's time that we now connected to MongoDB, started accepting that data from post requests and saving it to the database. But we can't just accept it and send it anywhere. First of all, we need to connect to MongoDB. So the first thing you need to do is make sure MongoDB is running in the background. So you want to type this command right here. And then we need to go out and connect to it because although MongoDB is running in the background, this application knows nothing about it whatsoever. You know, it's not psychic. It's not just going to automatically say, hey, I, I can detect MongoDB running. I'm going to connect to it. We need to explicitly say we want to connect to it. How do we do that? Well, we want to head to our index file right here and we want to create a connection string if you like. So first of all, I'm going to require mongoose at the top right here because we're going to use that to connect and I'm going to say const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. Okay, and then mongoose provides us with a method called connect which we can use and pass a connection string to so we can go out and find the database that we want to connect to. Okay, so let us do that now right under here. I'm going to say connect to MongoDB and then we'll say mongoose dot connect and then we pass in our string right here. So first of all, we want to say MongoDB. That is the protocol. Then it's colon. Then it's double forward slash. Then we're connecting to localhost and we're going to go to go ninja. In fact, we'll say ninja go okay so this is the kind of database if you like that we want to connect to and although that doesn't exist yet when we connect to it from this application mongoose is going to go out see that it doesn't exist and it's going to create it for us so it doesn't matter that it doesn't exist yet okay so now we're connected to mongoose uh, to mongodb sorry there's one more thing i want to do just quickly and that is set mongoose's promise equal to the global promise because mongoose's version of the promise is deprecated so all we need to do that is say mongoose dot promise with a capital p and set that equal to the global object in node.js dot promise okay so we're overriding this mongoose promise if you like because that is deprecated okay cool so now we have connected to mongodb and now when our application runs, it's going to run this code, connect to MongoDB, and then when we accept a post request, we can take that data and interact successfully with MongoDB to store it in the database. So how do we actually do that? Well, we're going to need to go to our post request handler right here, because this is where people will be sending us data, if you like. And what we want to do is create a new ninja in here, based on the ninja model that we created in the last tutorial, this thing here. So it's going to have this structure, this ninja schema structure, and it's based on this model because we're storing it in the ninjas collection. OK, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is just get rid of this console.log statement and I'm going to say var ninja and I'm going to set it equal to a new ninja object, right? We can do that because we've created this ninja model right here. But in order for us to do this, we're going to have to require this thing, this ninja model in this file. So remember, we exported it right here so we can just import it up here at the top. So what I'm going to do is say const ninja is equal to require. And then we need to find the ninja file, which is in the models folder. So first of all, we need to go up a directory. So I'll say dot dot forward slash to go up a directory. Then we want to go in the models folder. Then it's called ninja.js. So we'll just type ninja. OK, so now we can use that ninja model in this file. We've created a new instance of that ninja model. So this is great uh, creating a new record, if you will. It's not been sent to MongoDB just yet. We're just creating it locally here in the code. Then we need to send or rather give this ninja um, kind of instance some data, if you like. OK, so we presume that the user is going to send some JSON data, which is going to have all these different properties. If we go to the schema, it should have a name, a rank and available property. So we can just get that off the request body, which we learned about in a couple of tutorials ago. So I'll say request dot body. OK, so now we're creating a new Ninja instance and we're using the data which has been sent to us in the body of the request. 
Okay, so we're basing it on that data. So now what we can do is we can say ninja, which is this thing here, this variable we just created, this instance of this ninja model, if you like. And we can use a mongoose method called save, which will now go out and save that to the database in the ninjas collection. All right, because right here we said we want to refer to the ninja collection. Mongoose pluralizes that, calls it ninjas in the database. So we know whenever we're saving a ninja object, we're saving it to this collection right here. Okay, so there we go. That is how we actually save it to the database. But we can actually make this a little bit shorter. Instead of creating a new instance and then saving them separately, what we can do is use a mongoose method called ninja.create. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these. And I can say Ninja with a capital N because it's the Ninja model. We're creating a new instance of that. So we can say dot create. Then again, we pass through the request dot body, which is the data they are sending to us in the request body. OK, and then this is going to do two of those things together. It's going to create a new instance of the Ninja object locally and then save it to the database. We don't need to call Ninja dot save or anything like that. Now it does it for us in this method, which is really cool. OK, so it's often good practice to send back the data which the user has sent us in the first place, OK, to say that everything went OK and this ninja is saved. So what this does right here is return to us a promise. And basically that means that this here is going to take some time to complete. It might take a second or less or more. So what we need to do is wait for this action to be completed and then fire some more code. Then we're going to send our response. We want to make sure this has happened correctly before we send our response. Make sense? So we can't just send our response here. We need to wait for this to complete. And because it returns to us a promise, we can tack on the dot then method, right? So this takes a function as a parameter and gives us the data which it has saved to the database. Okay, it returns it to us. And what we can do then in this function is send our response because this function only fires once this action has been completed. Make sense? So now what we want to do is grab this response, paste it in here, and then I'm going to get rid of that. In fact, we'll get rid of all of them. And we're just going to send back the ninja, which we have saved to the database. Make sense? So just to run through this quickly one more time. We're going to receive a post request where someone is going to attach some JSON data to the body of that request. OK, that JSON data is going to represent a new ninja with these different properties, name, rank and availability. Once we receive it here, we're going to say ninja.create. This is a mongoose method and this is the model. So we're calling this create method on the model, which is going to create a new instance of a ninja using the data that we receive from the body of the request. It's going to save that data to the database for us. And then this is going to wait until the action is complete. Once it is, it's going to return to us the ninja it has saved to the database. This function is going to fire. Then we're going to send a response with that ninja in the response. So we're going to send that JSON back to the user, the client, so that it knows everything has been successful. Make sense? So now what we can do is try this out in Postman. So I'm going to make sure I'm running the app. I'm going to come here and I'm going to say nodemon index. Make sure this is running first of all. Then I'm going to open up Postman. So let's grab that. And we want to make a post request to forward slash API forward slash ninjas. Right. And we also want to send in. Oops. Postman. Cra um, this crash. So let's see why. And it's because stupidly in the last tutorial, I think I missed out a semicolon. Yep, I did. So type Boolean. OK, so let's save that and try this once more. Make sure it's running. So, yep, now it's listening for requests. OK, so let's make this request. So post so forward slash API forward slash ninjas. We want to send some body data. The name is Ryu. The rank is black belt. And we also need to send availability or I think the name is available, the property name. So let's have a look. Yeah, available. So let's send that as well. We'll say available and set this equal to true. OK, so if we send this now, which I'll do, then we can see we get back now an object with the name, which is Ryu. Rank is black belt available is true. So it's sending us back that saved ninja. And notice there's a couple of extra things on here. There's this top one right here and this ID right here. So this ID 
is that unique identifier that Mongoose gives to this new Ninja instance when it creates it, okay? So that it can be identified, if you like, from the database when we come to find something. So it returns that to the end user, which is really useful because now we have a unique identifier on the front end, which we can attach to this user. We can associate it to this Ninja, okay? Cool. So now we've sent this request. How do we know it's actually saved to the database? Because we can't see a visual representation of it. Well, that's where a piece of software called RoboMongo comes in. So I'm just going to open this up. And you can download this, by the way, from robomongo.org. It's completely free. Click that download button. And when you first fire it up, you might not have this new connection right here. So you just want to create one and click next. And that's going to kind of connect to the database for you. I'm going to connect to this. And then hopefully we should see our database. Yeah, Ninja Go, because like I say, Mongoose creates this for us when it doesn't already exist. So if we open this up and go to collections and then we can see our ninjas collection, we can see this object right here with this unique ID in it. If we expand this, we can see the name is Ryu and the rank is black belt. So ta-da, this has successfully worked. We have taken in a post request. We have created a new ninja instance. We have saved it to the database. Then we've returned that saved ninja back to the user so they know it was successful. Pretty awesome. But I just want to test a couple of things out here in Postman. So we said in our schema right here that name was required, right? And that availability was defaulted to false. So first of all, let's not pass through the available property and see what happens. So let's go to Postman and I'm gonna just change this. I'm gonna get rid of available and I'm gonna change this to Yoshi and change this to Brown. Okay, so I'll send this and see what happens. Okay, this time we get another option back. It's defaulted the available property to false. Cool. We still get the rest of the object back, which is good. Let's just check RoboMongo. And if we run this again, we can see a second object. The name is Yoshi, brown bell, false for available. Awesome, so that's worked. Now I just wanna check out this thing right here. We said name was required. So let's try sending along some JSON where the name property is not there. Okay, so let's open RoboMongo again. This time what I wanna do is take off the name property. I'll put in available. I'm gonna set that to be true. And this can be the red belt. Okay, so what happens when we send this without a name? Well, it keeps on loading. Mm, nothing happening just yet. Okay, what's happening? Well, let's open RoboMongo and see if anything has saved. We'll play this. No, two objects still there. So it's not saved anything else to the database. Um, if we open up our console, we can see this error right here. The app has crashed, okay? So basically, we get this validation error which says the name field is required. So cool, this validation right here in this schema is working. So it's not accepting the data. We've sent the wrong type of data with the wrong properties and it's not accepting it. It won't just go and save it to the database, which is really cool. However, in Postman right here, we're not getting any response whatsoever. It just says loading. So our clients, our end user really, has no idea what's gone wrong with this request because they might not be aware that we need a name property. So we need a way to handle this error and send back an error to the user so they know what's gone wrong. And we're going to take a look at that in the very next tutorial.